and welcome to Aviation Easy Explained. My name is Frank Dry, and I'm pleased to guide you through part one of our interesting topic here today. Independent of my ongoing other video productions in which I explain common aviation topics in an easily understandable way, mainly for non-aviators, requires the following production series, a basic aviation and aircraft knowledge. I will explain airbus systems and philosophy in more detail and it should be my answer to the friendly inquiries sent to me who are looking for more specialized information. However, this video is neither part of a type rating nor part of a certified training but my personal knowledge and experience which I'm more than happy to share. Thank you for asking, I'll be happy to respond. As the language and professional aviation environment is English, I will impart my upcoming knowledge in English as all the certified aviation documentation is in English anyway. Okay, for an off your crossing, turn right. Foxtrot Delta Delta Zero, wind 270 degrees, 16 knots, runway 02, cleared for takeoff. The auto flight system A of S is a complex system and it is where the evaluation and processing of many sensors and other systems take place. The clear goal is to help the pilot to carry out an efficient but above all a safe operation. In order to establish this, the main task is in divided into the following sub areas. <clears throat> the flight guidance, FG, the flight envelope, FE, the flight management, FMS, and the flight control data concentrator, FCDC. As you can see, some components get quite long names because they are made up of individual terms. For this reason, it has become quite standard practice in aviation to use abbreviations. To make the abbreviation clear, I have used red letters. Before we deal with the individual tasks in more detail, let's first take a look at the architecture of the autofly system and the interaction of its main components. The heart for sure are the three independent primary flight control and guidance computers PRIMS. The autoflight guidance part of each PRIM is able to operate two autopilots, APs, two flight directors, FDs, and or the autothrust. The next major system components are two flight management systems with three flight management computers, FMCs. When all three flight management system computers are functional, flight management system 1 works with FMC A, flight management system 2 with FMC B, and FMC C is kept in standby. The task of the flight management systems are provide the pilot with flight planning and navigation information, calculate and optimize the aircraft performance, Manage lateral, vertical, and speed guidance according to the flight plan data which you have loaded in the system. And last, display all vital flight data on the PFD, ND, and MFD. Now let's see how we operate the whole system. The flight crew interacts with the autoflight system through the autoflight system control panel. The AFSCP is the interface for selected targets. I'll come back to that subject in a moment. Next, we have two multifunction displays, MFDs, with two keyboard and cursor control units, KCCUs. A flight control unit backup function made available through the MFDs. We have two primary flight displays, PFDs, and two navigation displays NDs. Four thrust levers on the A380 and two thrust levers on the A350 with two instinctive disconnect push buttons and two side stick push buttons on each side. In the shown presentation, you can see the interaction of the flight guidance part computed by the Prim Master with other components highlighted here by the green lines and arrows. 
The flight management systems have as well an independent data exchange as we can see here with the connections highlighted by the blue lines. In case the AFS control panel would fail, it has a backup alternative. The flight control unit backups are selectable here in the top left menu and then displayed on the MFD. The flight control unit backup provides a full backup either for the EFIS control panel or for the AFS control panel. Once the AFS control panel backup has been selected, shown by the green illuminated light, all the functions as on the traditional AFS CP are available. The AFS CP backup can be selected, even the standard AFS CP is functional, but the control panel on the glare shield will be deactivated as soon as the AFS CP backup is activated. As I just mentioned, the auto flight system works with three primary flight control and guidance computers prims. These three computers operate alongside the flight guidance FG, the flight envelope FE and the flight control functions. For the flight guidance, the prim exchanges data with the following systems. The light green arrows in the presentation represent a one-way data exchange. This means that data are processed for other systems or data from the prim are sent for further processing, i.e. to the weight and balance backup computers and the flight management computers. The dark green arrows illustrate direct system control. Here, for example, the multi-mode receivers to manage the instrument landing system and the FMS landing system. We can see clearly the PRIMS play a major role in the auto flight system management. How do the three PRIMS work? Each PRIM is independent and can operate the flight directors, the auto thrust and one or both autopilots. Due to the fact that we have three PRIMS, we have three auto thrust channels as well. Only one PRIM is always actively in control. It is named the master. To determine which PRIM will be the master depends on what is called operational capability. This operational capability is computed by each PRIM individually and considers the manual flight control law capability, the flight envelope autopilot and approach capability, and the auto thrust capability. When all three PRIMs are fully functional and compute the same operation capability, PRIM 1 will be the master and PRIM 2 and 3 are kept in standby called slave 1 and slave 2. But the standby PRIMs are constantly fed with all the necessary data and switch settings and do their own calculations to be able to take over instantaneously in case of a PRIM master failure. The master PRIM has a priority to operate the autopilots, the flight directors and the auto thrust. Let's look at an example here. Initially, all the PRIMs have the same capability. PRIM 1 will be the master with autopilot 1, both flight directors and auto thrust engaged. PRIM 2 is slave 1, PRIM 3 slave 2. Now let's assume PRIM 1 fails. The PRIM logic will redefine the master priority immediately to keep the system working. PRIM 2 which up to until this point has been slave one becomes the master. Prim three upgrades to slave one position and the failed prim one degrades to the slave two position. And everything works fine. Where do we find access to the prims? On the overhead panel, there are two panel locations. The one on the left has the push buttons for prim one and three. And the panel on the right, the push button for PRIM2. The other philosophy is that all buttons are not illuminated, i.e. their lights are off, if the respective system they represent is functioning normally and the push button is in the position required for normal operation. As we can see in this image, certain buttons are protected with a metal grill flap. Airbus procedures require a verbal confirmation of both pilots before those covers will be lifted and the button allowed to be pushed. 
Here we see how it looks when the system, in this case PRIM1, is switched off. As off is not the normal operation mode, a white light is on. In contrast to other Airbus models, the Airbus 350 and 380 only have one FD selector button for Flight Director 1 and 2 on the Auto Flight System control panel. It's operational Airbus philosophy to always have either none or both flight directors engaged. I assume it's the reason why a second button is not used at this point anymore as it has before. Let's clarify what happens behind the scenes when the flight directors are engaged. Considering all three prims are capable, prim 1 will be master, 2 and 3 are on standby in the slave mode, Flight Director 1 sends guidance orders to Captain's PFD and Flight Director 2 sends guidance orders to First Officer's PFD. Both flight directors in the PRIM compute independently, one is not a copy of the others. Each flight director is using data from its respective site. The flight director has a horizontal green line which is called the pitch bar. The pitch bar visualizes vertical guidance commands. A second, now vertical line, the so-called roll bar, visualizes lateral guidance commands. A third green symbol shown up under certain conditions is named the yaw bar. The yaw bar gives precise information about the lateral deviation from the runway center line. The yaw bar only appears in runway, flare and rollout mode. In flare mode, the roll, pitch and yaw bars are visible. In runway mode, the pitch and yaw bars are visible. And in rollout, only the yaw bar is visible. Flight Director 1 will compute the guidance orders by using FMS 1 data and 8 years 1 data. Flight Director 2 will compute the guidance orders by using FMS 2 data and 8 years 2 data. The flight guidance computation provided both lateral and vertical flight path guidance and speed control in accordance with flight targets. A flight target can be a waypoint, a heading, a destination, um, a climb rate, an altitude, a flight level, a speed, a calculated estimated time of arrival, and so on. Airbus defines short and long-term navigation and is using the concept of targets. A short-term target is selected on the Auto Flight System control panel. It is referred to as short-term because it is essentially temporary, such as, for example, an instruction given by a traffic control to climb to an intermediate level or turn left or right to avoid traffic. A long-term target or long-term navigation is operated by the flight management system and is typically referred to as the managed guidance. It is called long-term navigation because it is used throughout the flight and is not temporary in nature. It follows what was entered in the flight plan. The PFD summarizes on the FME which modes we are in and respectively the aircraft will be directed. Shown in the presentation, we see on the AFSCP the speed and MAC heading windows are dashed, so these modes are managed. The altitude is selected and the vertical speed window, which represents the climb type, is dashed, i.e. managed as well. The FMA confirms the selection. Auto thrust is active as we see in the right column on the third line. The thrust mode is thrust climb as the aircraft is accelerating to the managed speed of 250 knots. Climb is a managed vertical mode and NAV is a managed lateral mode. Now we see quite a difference. The flight director look has changed. The reason, track FPA is selected instead of heading vertical speed. The presentation shows a selected track of 050 degrees. The blue triangle is now showing the selected track not the heading. The actual heading we are on is the yellow line under the blue triangle as we have no crosswind at present time, there is no drift. When the aircraft is flying on a lateral course, i.e. heading or in this case track, 
it is not following a managed flight plan with calculated arrival times over route waypoints, so it cannot manage a vertical profile anymore, i.e. the climb mode must convert to a selected mode, in our case now open climb. The flight director pass is a helpful tool, but it does not indicate guidance orders. Instead, the main focus is to show the aircraft trajectory. On this presentation, we see track FPA selected. The FMA shows track green on the third, the lateral column line. The flight pass vector is displayed. The blue triangle indicates the selected track, today's 360 degrees. The green diamond shows the actual track flown and the yellow bar shows the aircraft magnetic heading. As we have a wind now from 275 with 38 knots, the crosswind is drifting the aircraft to the right. Here in more detail, the green flypass vector symbol or named BIRD shows the lateral and vertical true flight pass. The angle between the aircraft heading and the bird is a drift angle. And last but not least for today, the vertical angle between the court or reference line of the aircraft, which is a little yellow square, and the bird is the angle of attack. A quick summary. Today we started talking about the Airbus Autoflight system. We covered the overall architecture of the Airbus system and the PRIM architecture and its logic. I spoke about flight guidance, FG, and discussed the selected guidance controlled by the AFS CP and the managed guidance executed via the FMS. Finally, we talked about the flight director implementation. In summary, the FD visualizes guidance orders for the pilots to either monitor the system and the autopilot is connected or using the guidance to fly manually. I think it was a good package of information for today. In the next video, I will continue. There is still a lot of information ahead. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would be grateful for your feedback. If you have any questions or suggestions or other topics you're interested in, please write me in the comment box. I'm happy if you stick with me, then please don't forget to subscribe. Hope to see you soon and thank you for your attention.